run outside, see if anybody's there, and then we're going to start. the vacuous in such a true and deep way. Honestly, every mitzvah that we do, we're attached and we're bonded to Hashem. It's like unbelievable when you really think about it. Even like when we were in the sukkah, like that was like an incredible experience of our whole body in the midst of such an aura of Hashem's incredible love and light. But the mikvah, when you go into the mikvah, every water is touching every part of your body and there is no mitzvah like it. So, when we think about the experience of some of the primordial energies that took place when the waters were covering the whole world and even when the Hashem was purifying the world and the world was in the womb of Hashem and our whole life we're yearning and longing to go back to that womb of Hashem And we want to capture the experience of every drop of water that's coming to touch us when we're in the mikvah to be replicated in every moment of our life. And like anything in life, when you're about to engage in something very important, there are preparations to make you experience the maximum impact of that mitzvah. And, and that's the kavana that one has while engaging. There were times where people prepared one hour to be able to then daven. And then one hour of davening and one hour after davening to prepare to descend and to come back into the reality of how to bring that kedusha into the moment of every physical deed that we're doing to bring the godliness in the moment. So, so many times people have a difficulty with the different actual preparations. I mean, there's always so much to do just to live, let alone to carve out that time. But I try to inspire people to see it as like a spiritual spa on the soul, to touch the divine that one can't really get like we get when we go to the mikvah. You know, have you ever wondered why up in the mountains, and we're here up in the mountains, it's 
colder than the places down in the valley because up in the mountains there's no atmosphere to be able to capture the light and the heat of the sun. In the valley, God created more atmosphere that allows for the capturing of the heat. So that's why in the valley, it is so hot. Well, every mitzvah actually is likened to the atmosphere of Kedusha that allows us to be able to capture God's radiance, God's light, God's blessings. So each mitzvah actually creates that vessel to contain that Kedusha. How much more so when we wrap it up with Kavana? How much more so when we do it with joy and with an understanding of how great and godly that act is going to be done? through us being the messenger, the intermediary, how much more so with joy and anticipation and longing for that moment? How much more so when we go to the mikvah? Rambam and the greatest of sages would tell us that the portals are, um, of the gates are open when you touch the divine of the mikvah waters. And really, the mikvah preparation is almost like a blueprint. Every physical act that we do to make our body ready for that ultimate union is really a, a, something that we can engage in to see what messages does the mikvah experience from the beginning to the end mean in our daily lives? What messages can we learn from the mikvah experience and bring it into our daily lives? So we know many years of all kinds of rubbish being said about how it could be so demeaning, what, we're not pure, and now, you know, no. In fact, Hashem gives us this opportunity to get to a state of purity just like the whole cycle of the week. We have six days of work, and then we dive into the divine. And the divine of Shabbat helps us grow into a greater divinity during the week. And just like we have to prepare the food, and we have to prepare spiritually as well to experience that having created that vessel to contain the Kedusha, again, the same cycle happens with a woman in a very unique and special way gifted to her. Each mitzvah we are taught raises our soul, elevates our soul infinitely. You know that one moment you didn't feel like smiling and you really felt like saying to someone like <laughs> your viewpoint of how they behaved or how they, you know, weren't to your standard or whatever it is and you work through the insult, you handle yourself, you have empathy in your eyes, infinite elevation of your soul. Each act is like a garment, just like a kala. Imagine a beautiful white kala. Her garment's so beautiful. So each act that we do, every mitzvah, actually elevates our soul infinitely, getting us to that ultimate divine state. So when you think about the preparations from beginning of the white cloth and the white sheets and all the halakhas that we do, we shouldn't and try not to feel the burden of the task at hand but constantly see it as love messages from Hashem of reminders of how pure you are, how whole you are, how white you are, how beautiful you are like a kala. I tell my kalas, even after 30 years of marriage, you know, remember that day. Remember that intense spiritual ecstasy. Remember the dreams that were coming true for you. Hopefully those who are not yet will, in the schluss of this class, invite me to your weddings, as I was telling people here. And, um, you know, that, that 
this is how we can live every moment of our lives, not just under the chuppah, not just in that magical, mystical moment of marriage, whether you're married or not married. This is the marriage between Hashem and HaKadosh Baruch Hu. This is delving into the deepest reservoirs of Hashem's Kedusha that can flow through you in the mikvah and let the waters flow into every moment of your life. Because water represents the rebirthing. When a baby comes into the world, the waters whew, come splashing through. When the, when the purity of the world came, it was the water. And this water represents flexibility. This water represents going with the flow. This water represents my attachment to God's plan in my day. Now, just like throughout the whole mikvah experience, and you see the laws of having to get rid of the dirt, and had to look here, and to check there, and to clean this, and to clean that, It's a message for us in our daily lives. We're in a physical body, and our body gets in the way sometimes. Our ego, our, uh, we're just about to enter very soon into the matzah mode, like the, the, the checking for the dough, whether it's in your, you know, uh, hands and your nails, whatever it is, it's like all these things are symbolic of Try not to let anything in the world, try not to let any physical experience with yourself, with people, with life, get stuck to you and cause an obstruction, God forbid, from the flowing godly neshama that wants to love, that wants to live with joy and wants to be God-like and flow with absolute, intense, beautiful emotion rather than the experience of the obstructions from our baser self, our animal soul, our yetzahara, that can allow us to feel that beautiful state of being pure like a kala, God forbid, stripped away. So we see that, uh, that many times women can feel not in the mikvah mood. And the obstructions can be the way someone treated them. You know, I always believed and have always said the spiritual experience of intimacy in the bedroom starts outside the bedroom. And we, the women who light Shabbos candles, we, the women who have the power the Lubavitcher Rebbe said, to bring out the light in others, have to be careful that the ongoing experience of the challenges of living in a body and feeling the feelings of being human, not let it become an obstruction in our being a lamplighter, in our bringing out the potential light and life force of the people around us to be able to continue to dance away like a kala, and we're gonna actually do a dance called Beautiful Like a Kala, and we will do a meditation to really mind, body, and soul, help it become so deep and penetrative that you'll live your life daily like a kala does, with anticipation, with excitement, because really, who's the best dressed in the whole wide world? The Kala. Who has the most gorgeous garments of that one time in her life, please God? The Kala. So with this experience of, of attaching ourselves to this vision of who we can be all day long, every day, with Hashem, our Chatan, with the people around us, even with the people who are not so easy sometimes to get along with. So, many times the, the longing and yearning to be at one with Hashem in the mikvah, God forbid, can be tampered with because of the people around us and the way they may have mistreated us or didn't treat us the way we would have wanted to. 
And I always say, look, I'm not 100% perfect, and the other person is not 100% perfect. And when you see someone who is lacking, and when you understand it's because their DOS at the moment kind of dissipated, their, their lower self kind of took over a bit, you have the power not to take it personally. You have the power to be able to protect yourself, to keep your purity, to keep your light, to keep your love, especially with the compassion that you have, that that person right now is not really in their best state of mind, that they're not so in, in, in equilibrium. And I always say to people, and in the midst of those moments, while you are preparing for the mikvah, and, and this book that I wrote, Baruch Hashem, um, Heavenly Waters, because it is the heavenly waters coming down, and it is helping us reach that state of purity, mind, body, and soul. I tell women that, you know, just like a uh, beautiful princess in a castle is protected by the castle, the, the, the mikvah kedusha, the, the knowledge that we bring into the experience really develops a greater protection so that the people around us don't as easily affect us and don't as easily penetrate our heart where that's where our ego is and that's where our hurt is. So I wanted to go through some of um, uh, the laws of the mikvah just to show you how you can have a different mindset when engaged in these um, laws so that you don't just maybe robotically do the checking um, but you can be more mindful that this is reminding me you know um, that I, I, I want to really bring this to my everyday life so, so, so this, these guidelines are really self-sanctifications and purifications of every part of us, not just the body when we're doing it, but our neshama. And this preparation for unification um, is really pampering ourselves and elevating ourselves, mind, body, and soul. So we said earlier we're checking for barriers when we're checking our body and we're checking that there's no makeup and we're, we're, we're checking our body. How do we react? How is our look when we speak? Where is our frown or lack of our smile? When we're, when each part, when you're checking the makeup in your eye, how do you look at someone with a kind eye, with a benevolent eye, with compassion? Are you, you're getting rid of the obstruction and the dirt that may cause you to see them in a negative way, may cause you to even look at them in a way that's demeaning and dis, you know, and, and furthering the experience of bonding. When we're, when we're untangling our hair from the knots, what has happened in the past in our relationship that has tangled uh, our experience of bonding, causing maybe us to not forgive, causing us to keep the knots of what happened in our heart, not letting go, not able, being able to forgive. We know just as Hashem constantly forgives us. We say all the time in the Torah, and every day in the in the in the in the, in the, in the when we daven, the shachrits, Hashem. We said Hashem's name, and He forgives us. We can't say Hashem's name in vain. He forgives us. And Hashem is asking us, like, can you just get rid of the barriers? Can you just rejuvenate? Can you just rebirth? Can you bury what was? Can you realize every moment is a new life in every day? And in this experience of going through the checking, we got to be gentle with ourselves because we're human. We make mistakes. It's hard for us. We have feelings. But the mikvah is a chance, like almost like a mini Yom Kippur, to keep us from waiting for the next Yom Kippur, to like really get us in a place of, of newness. 
so um, a sentence you can say to yourself, I will be gentle with myself. I will love myself as is. I am a child of Hashem. And I am reborn every moment anew in God's eyes. So we know also, as much as we are trying to get rid of all the physical things that can cause a barrier between us and the water, right? Our mind can be a barrier. Our ruminations and negative thoughts about our spouse also need to be cleared away. So that's why, you know, when we say um, cutting the nails, you know, there's a Hasidic teaching that we cut our nails because we don't want to take a chance that, that God forbid, like we could scratch someone and hurt someone, right? So our words that we say, we need to cut away, but it starts with our mind. If we don't work on clearing and getting rid of the obstruction of these negative thoughts about how he didn't do this, and he, or I, I feel like I, I don't even want to go to the maple because of what happened yesterday or what happened even this morning, for goodness sakes, or even an hour before. These thoughts can linger with us, and these thoughts create angels, either angels of repulsion by the other or a angels of attraction. Because every day we do create angels, and our thoughts create angels. If we have good thoughts, forgiving thoughts, compassionate thoughts, I'm not okay, it's not ever so okay, but I love him anyway. I have to love myself and God loves me as I am and, and I have to get in the habit of being able to love someone in that way. I'm clearing my thoughts. I'm creating such holy angels that are surrounding me that actually attract their angels to want to unite with me. Their angels to want to be. How many women say, my husband comes home, he closes the door, just dinner by day after day, year after year. And how many of them told me how they ruminate and can't stand and have thoughts and I escape and running away. These thoughts can be dealt with in preparation of intimacy while preparing to get rid of the obstruction that we're doing while going into the do you hear what I'm saying? Do you get the mix of messages? And it's not just, I gotta cut my nails, I just gotta get, look for the dough. Now, this is based on how many years of me not being pregnant. This is based on how many years of having to have the segula of reading the mikvah laws. And how many years I would say, wow, this reminds me of this in Chassidus that I learned, and this reminds me of that, oh, like the halacha of looking below the fat of your, you know, of the layers that sometimes there could be, you know, uh, dirt in between the layers of fat, and I was saying, oh my gosh, fatness is the gashmian and the, and the, you know, uh, the, the desires for more and more, a better house, a bigger house, a a car, whatever it is, and many times the, f the desire of the fatness in our lives can get in, 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 at, into an obstruction of unity and bonding. The poor guy, he's trying. The poor guy, I'm telling you, I know many people married to geniuses and never had a mazal for parnasah, and it's not like they were lazy, and sometimes people experience such rejection that they do end up giving up for trying, and, and, and we got to like soften our um, you know, our desires to make our unity and love and bonding first, rather than constantly seeing what we don't have in our lives. And we here in Spas, I don't need to say this, so I'm just going to skip over this, because I cannot even tell you the way I see people live here on such a holy level. But for those of you, maybe, I don't know, that, that you know, still want the American dream and everything that is wrapped around with it. But, um, you know, so we're trying to remove our barriers in here. And we're trying to so much, like, be in the habit of while well, having this sacred space of time, maybe even more than on Yom Kippur in some respects, because there's a distraction sometimes of the room around you. Here, you're in the water, it's you and Hashem. The divine is touching every part of you. 
you can feel the embrace. And as you prepare, you just say, please, I want not only my outside body to be a perfect vessel for this godliness, I really want my house of my soul, the most deepest recesses of the house of my soul, my mind and my heart, to be pure and ready, to be able to be that beautiful Kaylee to experience such a devaikas. I want the barriers gone. I want, I beg you, Hashem, please, please help me experience this, this beauty, this purity. What I can say is that all those years of not having a baby and everyone telling me to review the laws, finally it did pay off. Finally, Baruch Hashem, and I have many stories I write also in the micro book of women who were eight years and ten years and have babies, and really doing the mikvah, mik du yak, which means like really with precision, and hopefully with a little more kavana of what power of that incredible portal to the blessings of all that Hashem wants to give us manifest in so many blessings. Now after the mikvah, after you've done your best to purify body, mind, and soul, the moment comes where you're just about to leave the water in preparation of reaching that ultimate unity, even higher than the Holy of Holies, they say. The bedroom is our Holy of Holies. And I know so many people tell me, why does there have to be so many different <sighs> laws around this? Like, it should be so organic and so natural. Well, studies do show, and you probably already know the studies, that the highest rate of, of marriage are mikvah users. Highest rates of physical health from cancers is mikvah users. These are going and doing the research. Dangle that in front of your Yate Sahara sometimes, <laughs> like when you don't want to go. Dangle that in front of your Yate Sahara also that you can't imagine. Robert Ginsburg in his book, when he talks about the power of what's happening when you're intimate with your spouse, get ready. We know that the flow and the symbolism of the flow, the the flow of all the seeds of brachas are coming into the world in that moment of unity. You take an apple, you say a bracha on the apple, there's sparks of holiness in the apple, and voila, it's redeemed, it's released. But another person is another godly soul. And to be able to be in such unification in the most intense way, yes, the waters of Hashem holding us, embracing us in the womb of Hashem, in the mikvah, yes, but that's water. That's not a godly soul. So the unity and the embrace in the divine bedroom, that's even higher. That's why we have to go through all this process to make ourselves ready for the most intense unity with Hashem, with another person that has a chalak el kai mamish with them. Do you get the picture? Do you see what's happening? So you might be upset and not feel like it. And you might need the time to like recenter yourself back to the core issues of why you're in this earth, what you're longing and yearning for to be connected in this way with the divine in this most intense way. And you have to tap into the godliness of that person and almost put blinders right now and bury what was. And the new potential begins. And when that flow from that intense holy union comes into the world, let me tell you, the chesed of 
Hashem. That is a power to crush, eradicate, and turn over whatever gvurot the spouse has, meaning gvurot, meaning the negativity, the gvurot in a not good way, the klipas, the buried heart, the cold heartedness, the stone heartedness, the are you there person anywhere. This chesed from Hashem, from this unity, flows and changes the dynamics of this person's soul. Especially when you have these kavanas and understand what's going on beyond the amazing pleasure of unity. The measure, immeasurable, immeasurable pleasure of feeling needed and wanted. Because really it's a feeling of needed and wanting that's mirroring God's desire for you. God wanting you. God making you feel so divine and so pure. Not only that, besides that it spills over to your children and to generations. There's like, you know when Miriam was by the water protecting Moshe Rabbeinu, went the extra mile? Thousands of generations benefited from that one act. That one act, especially when you're not in the mikra mood. And especially when things were a little rocky. I remember one day I was like so tired, jet lag, landing, and my mikvah had to be Friday night of all nights. Stormy, freezing weather. My husband wasn't even in town. Why can't we stand in here? Let me just another day. And I was sickly, cold, fighting a cold. I just did not want to go. But these mikvah messages kept me going. I had to walk a whole hour by myself in a foreign territory. I didn't even know if she's going to make it or I'm going to get on time, make a wrong turn, go there, and she won't even be there because I can't even call her. Every step, I remember what I wouldn't do to experience God in, in this lifetime in this way. Whether if I'm going to be intimate that night or not, whether I'm going to be sicker, or more sick, if that's the correct English terminology. And I went. And I was so sick of I couldn't even lift my hand to like take off my clothes. It was really bad, bad. I got into the mikvah, did as best I could to thank Hashem when I got there. I was like, I can cry now, remembering. And saying, Hashem, this was for you. Because I'm not going home to a loved one. I'm, I'm doing this for you, and I'm so happy I was able to do this and take my sacrifice. Even though I came with a little, and it wasn't so easy, and every step I father, and I was like, I'm gonna go back. But then I actually was putting my clothes like with ease, and then I actually was walking like full speed ahead. Like I just was really sick, and I experienced having done the self-sacrifice in a sense, having done something so difficult. So many stories. One story in particular I want to share with you before we dive into the divine of this beautiful dance it, and, and do a meditation is a woman who, when I landed in Israel, I would go back and forth um, and I, it was Arab Rosh Hashanah and then my husband and I were blowing shofar in the streets for people who don't get a chance. We did be Korpolim in places where they don't get a chance to hear the, the, um, the shofar. And as my husband's blowing and finishes, someone runs to me, Miriam, Miriam, oh my gosh, you're here. And I need you to meet with me. I, I, I'm telling you, I have someone she needs. Uh, please. I'm like, oh my gosh, I just landed Arab Rosh Hashanah, maybe some, whatever. No, it has to be soon. After Rosh Hashanah, I met with the woman. She's been having severe OCD, severe panic attacks, severe everything. And when I met her, she was in pants and not seemingly, you know, maybe observant, like I after found out that she was more observant than I thought. And I remember experiencing 
explaining to her this concept of you know preparing ourselves for spirituality and how it really helps our mind our soul and and it really brings healing and and when I said to her these concepts she seemed to really like listen and her eyes were opening so I thought like wow I have like like a, a potential buyer but not in that way I don't know how to say it. I just feel like a potential person that could really benefit from what I have to offer because at first I was like okay maybe she's I'll be like I'm high in the sky giving her you know to the spiritual of a, a remedy for something so you know serious seemingly that could not be connection to it. Why did she come to you? What was the connection? Because the lady who knew me, that I helped a lot of people with mental um. disorders, I'm a therapist, but I have a very Jewish, mystical mm. approach to mental disorder. I mean, I'm very also... So she didn't come to you anything about Mikvah? No. Got it. But I was explaining this, mm. and out of the blue, I almost wanted to, I don't want to say the word, but poof, like, what the heck? Why would you say that spiritual practice of every anything? Like, I, I would say, like, I don't know. Because normally I don't ever say such a thing. But somehow God spoke for me. And I said, like going to the mikvah. She looked at me like I was a prophet. Her face was almost white, about to, like, pass out. And I'm like, oh, no. What did I say? I was, like, almost berating myself. What the heck? And, but then I saw the glow on her face come to life. And she goes, you don't understand. I used to go to the mikvah. And I said to her, oh, used to. When did you stop? Well, I stopped. And then I said, well, when did these panic attacks, when these problems? Oh my gosh, right after stopping going to the mikvah. I blessed her to like go back again. And the reason she stopped, she was spotting it. It was so difficult for her, it was too <clears throat> time consuming and it was too much for her. And lo and behold, she went to the mikvah and even before the mikvah, the spiritual power of deciding to go back to the mikvah already started its process of healing. She called me the next day and she said, you don't understand, my daughter, the first time in two years have seen me smile. Mm -hmm. And it like, the cloud of gray, dreary blockages melted away. So I hope that the little I gave you here um, regarding the preparation and everything that's going on in this experience of the mikvah will get you to search more, to learn more, to delve more into all areas of your spiritual practices, but especially the um, the idea of the sanctification and elevation of the ultimate <coughs> going to the mikvah and intimacy. So, because even when we're intimate with our loved ones, the whole world is elevated. Even Goyim, Rabbi Ginsburg teaches from Kabbalah, they even are yearning and longing to come closer to Hashem because of our intimacy it's like it's beyond i mean we know look we'll look at the time and memorial in our in our in our tanakh and our stories of our heroes the greatest of tzaddikim like did everything so beautiful and so pure in their experience of mikvah and intimacy and you know ishmael came from you know abraham and and asaph came from from, you know, uh, Yitzchak. But we do learn, though, those souls that come, Hashem chooses in a way that um, that is beyond our control, no matter how our mikvah or our intimacy is. But we are taught, when we have these holy kavanas, to give pleasure to the other, to unite ourselves with Hashem, to be able to even unite Hashem with Himself, like mm -hmm. the Shechina with the Kedusha Bruchu. I mean, just are uniting when we're experiencing this unification. And all this is amazing. But also, when we have the greatest of these Kavanas, we actually are blessing this, this, 
this new entity that can come into the world to be a new lamplighter, please God, with garments of their soul that will make it easier for them not to be like an Esau, easier for them to be more like Ariya Kadosh and, and the, the holiest of Tzaddikim. The way we experience the mikvah, the way we experience intimacy, does make an impact on future generations of how much easier mm -hmm. it will be for them to be able to um, have less of a challenge uh, and more of a chance to bring the Kedusha. So, ready to feel beautiful like a Ka, no matter what, no matter who, no matter where? Ready to tap into that experience, not only in preparation of the mikvah and that holy night, but like every day. Ready to see the vision of this beautiful princess in a castle protected, that no one's going to diminish her fire of love, her fire and her passion, and in actualizing her truest, holiest self. So... I'll tell you how. Mm -hmm. First of all, when you wake up in the morning, imagine what a bride feels like when she wakes up. She's so excited, right? To get her garments, <laughs> you can get her nails done, her makeup done. She's going to be woo, the most beautiful of her life. And hopefully, ah, the Lubavitcher Rebbe actually yeah, says you don't look, have to look at your passport. <laughs> to see how you feel, no matter what age you are, as long as God is your rock. You can actually get healthier and stronger as you age. So that's my motto. I keep that passport away from me. <laughs> and I let the kadusha of my love and my life and my happiness like be the blood. They say when your blood is so healthy from happiness. So when you wake up in the morning happy like a kala, you're actually not only getting your blood to be so healthy and flowing and, and like no end to the circuits of where it's reaching its destination in your body, but mentally, when you imagine just how happy she is to collect these garments, collect, put on, dress up, every moment of your life you have a chance to collect these garments of your soul that beautify you, that redeem you, that reveal the truer you, your best you, that it allows for the expression of the awesomeness of who you truly are. So with this happiness of, you know, imagining a scene where someone isn't so pleasant to you, and you keep this in mind when you wake up and like almost practice that, I am beautiful like a kala, and you see the dress. You, you say dress up like a kala, and I have a gorgeous gown, and I, but I travel very light when I come to Israel from place to place, but maybe one day I'll store it in every place I go to so it'll be ready for me, and so that when Mashiach comes, I'll dress up as the ultimate kala for Hashem, ready, but um, with our tambourines and everything. So, um, so I just want to, you know, give you the vision of the garments of our soul, and the longing and yearning to collect them in a happy and beautiful way. So these are the mikvah messages that we pour into our daily lives so that we don't allow what's going on around us to tamper with or diminish this chayas, this love, this energy, this component of our soul yearning and longing to be more God-like. You know, the one of the teachings in the book uh, Inner Work by um, the, 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 the one sentence was like worth reading the whole book just for that one sentence but every sentence of that book um, was so valuable but one of the sentences was, was that um, like our whole purpose in being on this earth is to the books in the basket yeah. Oh, to be able to change our desire from right away. getting right to giving. Wow. So, because there's a pleasure in getting. 
We all know it. It's just stuff there. But to be able to exchange that and work on the goal of having the ultimate pleasure of giving. And so, so then there's no calculations. Oh my gosh, I have a chance to give. I have a chance to forgive and give of myself intimately. I have a chance to like show to my creator I want to be more like him and unconditionally love. I want to not let my garments get stained by what they're doing. I don't want the barriers for me to like lose that touch of divinity that I can only really get by giving. And have the pleasure of giving with no calculation, with unconditional love. And that's what the mikvah is about. Because you're going there, knowing that there was this and there was that, and there was this and whatever, um, and you're readying yourself. For a friend. Uh, yeah. So we have to mute out all those voices, and we have to mute out the inner struggle of not desiring and making that connection calculation. It's not easy. We're human. We feel. We hurt. But the more you redeem your soul, the more these garments become like a castle that you're fortified and no arrow of any enemy, quote unquote, can enter your sacred space, your soul. I really tried. It's annoying. And these thoughts are annoying. And it's hard sometimes. <laughs> but trying so hard to mute them every step of the way. <laughs> and go with the flow of the waters of God's plan for the moment. <laughs> We're trying. We're trying. We keep trying and we don't give up because we know Hashem gave us everything. We don't have to go to the moon to try to create, create that beautiful kala. We're all there. It, it's all here. It's all inside of us. So the kala wakes up and she's excited. And you'll see in the dance movements that represent some of the concepts that we learned here today, and I'm going to redo the dance, then explaining each step and how it can remind you of the journey of being beautiful like a column. So, we don't want to get imprisoned. The Torah teaches us that we're here to, you know, <laughs> really circumcise our heart. Do you, you ever think about that? Circumcision of your heart? What's that all about? We have barriers on our heart. That's our ego, our judgments, our impatience, our, all those things that are the other side. And the circumcision comes from our thoughts that are created from the Holy Torah from our meditations, from our tefillahs. This is what causes the heart to be circumcised. I always explain that tefillah is like a preparation for surgery, and the Torah we learn is actually the surgery. So when you think about your heart and circumcising your heart, tefillah, the fire of tefillah, melts away these barriers. When you have the kavana, when you, when you understand how to pray, with the, well, hopefully you'll come to some more, more of my classes while I'm here. And if not, yournowheights.org and my YouTube channel, my books, it's, it's much, much of it is documented in there. But so the prayers help you clear your heart. And the whole purpose of clearing your heart is so that your divine soul can be in your mind and in your heart because it flows from the mind to your heart. Then, after you do the whole process of the prayers, then your heart is open. Then your godly soul really is within you. Then the godly light of your Torah learning right after 
fills up your heart and fortifies your heart, strengthens your heart, giving you the vigor and the co-op and the strength to not let all the things around you blemish, taint, stain the beautiful neshama that you are. So, ready for the dance? <laughs> Thank you for joining those of you out there. But I think I would like to do the meditation first because we have Zoom here. And I don't want to disconnect the Zoom. So I'm actually like on my feet now, um, thinking ahead that I think the meditation should be first. And those that don't aren't interested in dance or whatever can leave and, and then we'll shut the Zoom off and we'll dance with Mashiach soon. I have my tambourine. Like a little <laughs> one in my purse, like I always carry it with me. Anyway, um, but uh, but don't worry, we'll, we'll we'll get together soon in Yerushalayim. Techa Bumiyam and Mashiach. So I would we have some yes, we can um do a little of that first, get us in the mood of like relaxing our body, and then we can add. What is your name, by the way? Riva. Riva? Riva. Wow, I have a very dear friend for so many years, Riva. So oh, I'm yes. just like, okay, wow, nice to meet you. So, um, uh, and then we'll hear some music, and then we'll do the meditation, then we'll hear some music, and then we'll do the performance, and you will learn how to do this dance as well if you want. Some people don't like to dance, they can just watch. You'll see, it's very interesting. I have many dances, I don't know, we'll do one and to start, and we'll do others again, hopefully. I might be back, actually, in a month to Israel, so you never know. With, you know, before, with Mashiach, of course. Yay. Do you want to separate the music and the meditation, or do you want to Let's just hear your music, your let's prepare our body, and then um, mm -hmm. I, I do have a nigam of the... Uh, no, let's use your music, because actually when we shut off, then I'll get to my music. You yeah. just tell, yeah, yeah. You tell me when to start and when you... I'm open to I love music, so this is for me. Do we want to shut off the... Yeah, we can dim it? the lights even more. But, yeah, wow. Well. I think I can hold it While you're preparing yourself, I just want to really touch upon a point here because a lot of people have their own inner avenger that makes it hard for them to even yearn and long for the divine oneness, honestly. They have a lot of challenges. They feel like God is a judging God. God is disappointed. It's all the faculty of imagination running wild in a very unholy place. Place. Hashem loves you as is. You don't have to prove yourself to Him. You don't have to prove yourself to you. You are beautiful like a comma, always. But does a challenge always mean that Hashem is not loving you? Hashem is always loving you. Always loving you. As is. As is. You are His cherished child. You are His kala. And he created you, and he knows your limitations, and he knows that he created imperfection perfectly perfect to help you be a co-creator in one day closer and closer to your truest self from your own inner work. He designed it that we need to have some Yeridas to get an Aliyah. He designed our whole experience in the way that he did, so that we get to that ultimate place of unification with our own efforts. Would you like to sit here? I'd love to see people on the phone. I feel comfortable here. Oh, okay, just stay here. Yeah. It's just that my yes, wall is... Oh, I know. <laughs> Do you need any? Maybe just a little sip of water. I can throw these. Okay. Let's okay. do Tea or what? Oh, uh, tea would be the letter. So let's think of the word mikvah mm -hmm. and see the word kaveh, hope. The hope for the ultimate redemption now. Your own personal redemption. Being able to reach new heights. See the water. 
feel the flow. I'm going to join you. what we just learned. Let's say a little prayer, please, Hashem. your body in a comfortable position. Be mindful, like, of letting every part of you begin to open up. Our focus will be our heart, our mind, our soul. To be in unison with the body. so thankful for this moment in time. To dive into the divine. And when we go into the spiritual spa of our soul, the inner mikvah of our mind, the inner sacred space, in my heart. Every part of your body relaxing, getting ready to go on this journey.
to the divine. You've prepared. You've done your spiritual practices as best you could. And now the moment is unfolding. All the portals of the heavens are open. You begin to take your first step into the body.
nearby the water's edge, you actually see placed before you a beautiful, beautiful set of the Kama's dress and all its accessories. Pure, white, holy, representing now that your heart is filled with this love, this light, this passion, this, this purity is now. It's going to flow into the garments of your soul, your thoughts, your speech, your actions as you dawn on the new garments from this rebirth. this feeling beautiful like a kala as you put every accessory on reminding yourself every thought, speech and action infinitely redeems you infinitely elevates you you're all dressed ready you see in a distance the palace where your beloved is. to open the door and there's no vision to capture the infinite oneness that's behind this door you need nothing no desire is as great and as real as pure as this oneness behind this closed door your privilege
different directions that he would go to. cherished so much. smile on your face. No end to it now. body that has these garments of purity and beauty, the feet that wants to really give you the strength to march ahead with royalty, with dignity.
Thank you, Viva. Wow. Thank you, Viva. Angel. Yeah. You have to go with me wherever I go. Yes. <laughs> Thought it occurred to me, actually. <laughs> Halfway through. to experience the dance. Those of you who are here that can stay, those of you who can for whatever reason, um, we'll do it again in another opportunity. Make some messages for our daily lives. Much of what I shared. So I, the, the story you share is the first one that I opened when Rachel gave me the book. Oh, wow. The, the call of meditation? No. The oh. about the woman with the... Oh, the OCD. OCD. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And many more stories, oh my gosh. When people get in the water, people be appreciated. Miami was amazing. That was amazing. And this just added to a whole new dimension. Of course, I was like, this is amazing. She's so out and getting your stuff like you played me in the background when you're not with me. That was the CD when we recorded it. No, nothing like live, but at least. You use that in your place? Oh my gosh. <laughs> you can see things very well. Right. Unbelievable! I was like, I was there. I've never so like had such an experience myself doing a meditation. That was amazing. Like wow. What is that called? Um, this is a hand drum. This was um, handcrafted for me and paid for by many, many students from all over the world. Oh. Where was it made, Reba? Um, Allison and. Rahalea and I, Abigail Sanson, and Rahalea and I went to visit Man who crafted this. His name is Gortal. So I know, my name is Rahalea. Oh, sorry. it's not fun. We went to visit him. And it's we went to visit him in Natalia. Where? Oh, Natalia. No, we didn't accept those two things. Northern Natalia. Northern Natalia. Northern Natalia. Northern Natalia. Northern Natalia. Northern Natalia. Um, he's, he, yeah, this is, um, he, this is, the, this type of instrument in the world is only about 25 years old. Um, wow. It was invented in Switzerland, according to Ortal, and Ortal is one of the top crafters in the world mm -hmm. of this instrument because he really puts his neshama and his heart into it. And um, he does sound healing. We went to visit him. He did like a very little brief session, but which had a lot of opening. What's his name? Ortal, and I'm forgetting his last name right now. Sorry. Um, and then when, when we inaugurated this instrument, it was Hanukkah, and it has eight um, tones wow. and a shamash. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that wow. Amazing. Wow. I think that's... Yeah. Yeah. Is he a Jewish mother? Jewish mother? Um, or Tal? No. Well, he's yeah. Israeli, yeah. so yeah. I imagine yeah. that he does. Oh, yeah, I think we... And he's an yeah. Ortel. It's hard to forget. Oh, yeah, we met. We went to his mom's yeah, house. Yeah, we met. We met. Right. <laughs> the whole house is bright pink and covered with houses. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, and they, 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 they have, have an entire wall that they've collected houses. Oh my god. And his dad is Jewish. like this unbelievable artist. Yeah, what? And all of the yeah, yeah. once, but all of the the whole house is like vibrating with creativity. I think the next class is you're coming to teach us how to do that. <laughs> and and the amazing thing is. When uh, when he delivered this, he delivered in Hashvan, and it was pouring rain out, and um, and he brought a prototype of another instrument, which I actually do have one, uh, but he brought the prototype, and it has, it looks like wind chimes, but they're laid out in a row, and there's eight chimes, and I said, oh, it's a Shminit, mm -hmm. right? Right? Mm -hmm. Right? And this is also a Shminit. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Yeah. God gifted you with such a, ooh, a soul. It's just in every... Thank you. I have a really interesting experience when I play with my eyes closed. My fingers can feel every tap of his hammer. That's what she's saying. Yeah. Like That's I exactly what yes. it's like. You pick up on the the nuances. Yes. Like you connect it. Unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. Really. Oh, 
It's a very powerful <laughs> instrument. No, but then Miriam picked up oh, on Miriam, it. Oh, Miriam, she's in tune. She, she, <laughs> you just said the same thing that really you're amazing. feeling when you play. So we, <laughs> did same you hear that? Has yeah, anyone taken you yet to the sound cave? Okay, it's so in my book. I wrote about the experience. <laughs> <laughs> I was last year with my so mom in Spas. So and this, I had the best this voice instrument there, actually. in the <laughs> You can only imagine oh my God. the reverberations. Yeah. So let's do something there. Reverberations. <laughs> <laughs> what a novel idea. we got to do more, for sure. Now I really have to come back, like in a month. After Pesach. I'm doing a retreat in, in L.A. I'm from L.A. Oh, many, many, many wow. years ago. But yeah, from last year. But she was two. Yeah, that's right. Thank you. And you're three now. That's right. Mm -hmm. And a half. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where are you staying? I'm right now in the Pico Robertson area. Um, I've gone through my own journeys of being a lot of places, so I don't know where is the next place, but she can direct me. David's going to have to come. That's all. I decided. Yes. <laughs> I want to do some freestyle dancing with this even more than I want to do my dance. Like, cause this is really... But we have a little time, I think, for both, I hope. Do we? I think so. Um, all right, so... I'm going to say goodbye to the viewers on Facebook and uh, join me next. Um, we might have a class tonight, so whoever wants tomorrow to be there. Tomorrow tomorrow night. Night. We have a class tomorrow night at the Restart. We have a two-day retreat at the, the Kinneret that I'm going to be kind of going back and forth because you all know how the change of plans because of the weather. But, uh, but I'm, so I'll be there as well. And uh, that way you can uh, be part of my groups if you want. So when I'm coming back, I have an Israel getaway group besides other groups of mine, but that we'll get into another time. But anyway, so yeah, join us. Hopefully more together. Your new heights.org. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs> Facebook.